feel like a magician with a handkerchief. five yards of red satin fabric. I am so excited. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. So Christmas is in exactly a week from today when I'm filming this and I have decided that I want my gift to myself to be a giant gown to wear on Christmas Day. But I've also decided to be very ambitious with this and I honestly don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to make this dress and I probably won't have enough time to edit this whole video and have it out by Christmas. So it is probably past Christmas when you're watching this, but hopefully I will have a dress to wear on Christmas. So I bought five yards of this beautiful satin fabric and I got it from um, a website, I think it's called Fashion Wholesale Direct. I know a lot of people ask me where I get my fabric, so I tried getting some from there because I wanted a lot of it and it was only like $3 a yard or something, so I was very excited about this. And I am pretty happy with the quality, it feels pretty good in my hands. And as I've already stated, I want to make a big Christmas gown. I'm also a little bit nervous about this because I don't usually wear red. Christmas is honestly like the only time I wear red because I own one red Christmas sweater. And this is a lot. Hopefully it'll look good. Um, I think I also do want to paint this fabric just because it is all a red plain fabric right now. So I'm going to be very ambitious with this and like I said, I do not have a lot of time for it. So hopefully this will be a fun video as you guys watch me scramble to finish this dress. So I have a lot of work ahead of me. <laughs> to get this dress off of her now. I'm still so in love with this dress, I miss wearing this dress. So for this dress, because I still have no idea what I'm going to do with it, I think I want to mess around draping it on my mannequin. So unfortunately, I have to take this beautiful dress off of her. She looks so beautiful on a hanger. She's just so pretty. Toga, we're done. All right, I have no idea what I'm gonna do here. I think I might mess around maybe doing a draped top. I think I'm just going to try to pin it a bunch of different ways and figure out which one I like best. One thing I do know is I want it to be a full length skirt just because I think it'll be really pretty. And for the skirt, I also ordered 10 yards of this tool off of Amazon, which I will gather and ruffle underneath it just to add a little more volume. So I only show you guys a little bit of the work that I did here, but I honestly probably draped this fabric for around three hours just messing with different designs and undoing things and redoing things. And even though I did do like four different sketches like a few days before my fabric was supposed to come in, I ended up not following any of those because I really can't tell what exactly I want to do with the fabric until I have it in my hands. And it took quite a few tries to find something that I was happy with. And I really love how the dress ended up turning out. But even with this design, I went back and forth on it for like two days. I might not hate this as much as I should. I think this is the direction we're heading in. I'm not as mad about it as I thought I would be. So now I just have to figure out how to sew that all in. It'll be a journey for sure. And so like I said, I do want to paint the fabric, I think. So my plan right now is I'm going to cut out the pieces that I need and then paint it directly onto my pieces so I know what the prints are gonna look like and that way I don't have to do extra printing and end up not using it. I kinda wanna paint my fabric because right now it is just a red fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my computer and my drawing tablet and I think I'm going to try to draw a design and then my plan is to print that out on some cardstock, take an exacto knife and carve it out and then kinda use that as a stencil to print on my fabric. I don't know if this is a good idea and I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do it but I kinda wanna give it a try so let's get working. And so the drawing program that I always use is called Psy, and that's also the program that I use to make all my doodles and stuff and all my videos, the little like wiggly ones. And I just really like this program, so highly recommend. Drawing this kind of design is also not something that I typically do. I usually like draw little cartoons and stuff or very realistic stuff, so kind of doing this abstract pattern kind of detailing things was quite the challenge for me and the first day especially was just so, so difficult. But after two days working on it, I started to really get in a group with it and I ended up really loving how the design turned out and had a lot of fun doing it. And it was just really fun to piece together all these really cool designs. And I really like how all three of my designs turned out. 
Alright, so, so far I have spent all day working on all the drawings for the dress, and I think I finally have all of them, and I'm pretty happy with how they look. And so the tough part with this kind of thing is figuring out how to size the drawings to something that I like and I can use as a stencil. And so I've been printing out a lot of different copies, and I think I like the size of them all now, and I have them all here. And so these are just on printer papers, so now I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print them all out on cardstock, and tape them up like I had there and then I'm going to take an exacto knife and my cutting board and I'm just going to go very carefully and cut out every single little piece. So this is going to be already a very long project. <laughs> I have a really bad habit of making things really overly complicated and like not thinking about the repercussions and these designs ended up being so tricky to cut out. They took me two days to cut out all three of them and after the small design took me like two hours to do, I was really questioning if I would be able to do the big ones, but I am honestly so happy that I stuck with it because the results were just amazing. But while I was cutting these out, it was quite a painful process. I also decided to go back and drape the other side of the bodice out of this leftover fabric that I had that I was using as a muslin so that transferring over the pleats would be a much easier process and a more like technically correct process. <laughs> Okay, so now that this side is all pleated, I've decided I'm going to do this the right way. And I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to mark out all of the seams that I want. And I'm going to use that as my pattern piece. And I'm also going to mark out all of the darts so that I can pleat it the proper way. Well, first of all, I'm going to take this one off so that I don't accidentally draw on it because that would not be good. Alrighty, and now I'm just going to basically draw where I want all of the seams to go. So I want this to be the top and then it needs an armhole. And now I'm going to mark the waist. So it should be straight across. And now I'm going to put two lines where all of these darts meet up so that I can know I put those two bigger lines together and that is my pleat. Okay, and now I can unpin this. And this is our pattern piece. Okay, so now that we have the pattern for the bodice front at least, I think it is finally time to pattern and cut out all of our other pieces. I had already been working on this dress for like four days, so it felt like forever to finally cut out the pattern pieces, but the time had finally come. So the first thing that I did is I cut out our muslin piece that we had just marked, and I left a seam allowance so that we would be able to sew it, and I used that as our first pattern piece for the bodice. And after I cut out that piece, I measured and patterned all of the rest of the pieces and cut them all out. And so here are the measurements for the front draped bodice pieces. And I cut out two of these. The next pieces are the bodice front lining pieces. And so I cut two out of the side pieces and one out of the center piece. After that, I cut out the back pieces and you're going to cut two out of this one because the lining is the same as the regular piece. And then I also cut out the sleeve pieces. And the sleeves are a little bit trickier because they have to be cut on the bias. So basically you're cutting it on the diagonal of the fabric so that it has a little bit more stretch. And I thought this would help with the mobility of your arms when you're wearing this dress. And after a short snack break and hanging out with Emmy, it was time to cut out the giant skirt pieces. And so I was just cutting out a basic circle skirt piece and I was making it to a length that I would want. And also because I was planning to wear this gown with my heels, I also added in that length when I was deciding how long to make the dress. And so I cut out one regular circle skirt piece by measuring everything from the center. And then when I was cutting out the second circle skirt piece, I used the first one as a rough pattern piece, but because I wanted to add a train, I added that into the second piece. And so instead of making everything the same length all the way around, I added 15 inches to the total length of the back. And so this is the front piece and you only want to cut out one of this. And then here is the back piece and you also just want to cut one back piece. All right, it is finally time for the most exciting and most scary part of this project, because I need to start painting. So I finished cutting out all the pieces and they are all right behind the camera right now. So I have everything set up and I have these stencils that I worked very, very hard on. I really, 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 really hope this works because otherwise this will be two days of work um, for nothing. So what I did is I cut them all out with an X-Acto knife, as you guys saw. And I also put a layer of Mod Podge on the front and back of all of them. And then I pressed them under a book today just to flatten them a little bit more. And so this is what they look like. Um, I didn't cut the rows out also because I think the cuts are going to be too close together and it wouldn't have enough structure to hold itself. So I'm going to freehand the roses. But so my plan right now is I'm going to use this and then I have these little like sponges and I'm just going to try to sponge on the paint. And I also did a paint swatch and I found a color that I'm happy with. So what I'm using is I'm going to be using this red fabric paint and also some of this metallic paint. And then I'm also mixing in just a tiny bit of black with it. And I think it makes a really, really pretty color and has a good shimmer in the sunlight. So I'm just really, really hoping that this works. 
So I think I just have to get working on it. I think it's really funny that you see me putting on my apron in this shot because um, instead of getting paint on the front of my shirt as you would imagine I would, I ended up getting paint on the back of my shirt. So this now has a big giant red stain on the back. Fun fact, because I might have accidentally backed up into the pieces that were hanging on my wall. Um, but we're gonna ignore that. All right, so the one I just painted was with this other sponge and I think it went a lot better. It was a lot faster to use. And I think it was a little bit cleaner because last time I was putting on the paint a little bit too thick. And those are both of the bodice fronts. They're both done now. Um, and I hope that they, I hope that, I hope it looks good. Also just a fun little story time. The night after I finished painting this dress, I had a dream. And in that dream, I adopted a duck. And for some reason, it was super important that I paint a dress for this duck. And we went with like a sea, like underwater theme for her. And it ended up being really pretty and she really liked it. But I just, I thought that was amusing. Time to get sewing. So after two straight days of painting, I finally have all of the pieces painted and I think they look really, really pretty. I'm really happy with how the stencil worked out. I was so nervous that I just spent two days cutting out the stencil for no reason, but it looks great. And I also did get my interfacing in yesterday so I can finally use that. So I'm going to cut out all of my lining pieces in my interfacing and then I'm just going to go ahead and fuse them with my iron. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my front side pieces to my front center pieces. So I'm just going to connect the side pieces to the top of the center piece and sew down all along the side. Okay, so the fit of this is looking pretty good. And because we are going to be draping the top, I want the bodice to be very stiff and structured so that when we drape it, it doesn't lose its shape when you take it off. So I'm going to try to put some boning in it. So I'm going to take this bias tape that I've had for a very long time and it's orange, but you're never gonna see it so I don't really care. And this is a single fold bias tape that is thick enough for my boning to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it down this seam that we just sewed. And then I'm going to fold it over to the center part because that part is a lot flatter than the side seams. And then I'm going to sew that down so it'll be the casing for our boning. Alright, so now that both of those are sewn in, it is time to add in our boning. So I just took a piece from this roll that I have here and I bought this off of Amazon a long time ago and I've used it a lot. And so I cut off a piece and I ironed it and I left a little bit of a curve so that it'll shape to us a little bit better. And now I'm just going to slide it through the little casing that we made. So I just remembered this is the lining piece so we actually want it to curve out this way on us so that on the inside it'll be looking really nice. So I made that little edit by just turning our boning the other way. And now I'm going to work on the back pieces. So I'm going to work on the lining piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put darts down the back because this is obviously very shapeless right now. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to sew from these corners all the way down and I'm just going to take it in about like an inch or so at the bottom and just make it gradually go all the way back up to the top. And to do these darts, I'm going to measure the bottom of this piece and mark the center use my little panda pencil for Christmas. And then I want my darts to be six inches apart, so I'm going to put three in the center and mark the six inch apart. And then I'm going to mark another inch and a half for the actual dart down here. And I'm also going to mark the center up here. And now I'm going to fold from this corner here all the way down to this corner down here. And I'm just going to fold this down and put pins all along it. And now I'm going to start down here where it's the biggest I want it to be. And I'm just going to make it super, super tiny all the top. And now that I like the way that it looks on the lining piece, I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on our actual back piece. Alrighty, now that both of the back pieces are sewn, I am going to take the lining piece and I'm essentially going to do the same thing that we did with the other lining piece where I'm going to take our single fold bias tape and again, I'm just going to sew it along the seam that we just sewed. Alrighty, so I just sewed both of the casings and I did go ahead and just put boning in them and they can hold their shape a lot better. So the back is looking really good, it looks so pretty. And now I think it is time to start working on the front pieces. So I have both of them here and then I also have this little muslin piece that we used. And so what I'm going to do is we have all of the pleats marked out on this one. 
So I just need to transfer those onto both of these pieces. So I'm going to lay this piece on top and what I'm going to do to make this a little easier to transfer all of our pleats is I think I'm going to cut into the muslin one because we really don't need this piece after this. So I'm going to cut into it all of the little darts so that I can mark them easier on the other side. So I'm going to move it from this one so I don't want to cut it. And then I think I'm just going to cut straight up into them. And that way I can just lift up these little flaps and mark it right here. And now I'm just going to add pins at all these little darts. Now I can lift this up and they are all marked out. So now I'm just going to take these two darts and put them right next to each other. And then I'm going to move the pins so it's going through both of the layers. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to baste all along the bottom here. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other piece. So after I did the pleats and basted it around bottom, the sun immediately went down. So what I worked on for a little while is I just pinned the front pieces onto our lining piece and I kind of did it by putting the lining on the mannequin and messing with it there and taking it off and trying to pin it off of it. And it was honestly really hard to get it to lay like the way I want it to, but I think I'm really happy with it now. I think it looks really pretty and the pleats were mostly correct. There are a few that I just wanted to pull a little bit tighter since the satin obviously works a little bit different than the muslin did. And so because I do like the way it's looking and I want to keep the shape, I think I'm going to take the basting stitches out at the bottom and re-stitch them so that they fit the pleats that I adjusted a little bit better. And then I'm also going to just cut it straight across the bottom because right now it kind of goes down at an angle. And then I'm also going to cut the lining piece so that they are all even so that when I want to pin them, it'll be a lot easier to get the shape that we had before. <laughs> So now that I have fixed up the bodice and it is looking pretty good, I am going to work on the sleeves now. And basically what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fold them in half the really long way and I'm just going to sew down this side seam. So now that that side is open, you can turn these right side out. And now we have this little like tubey thingy. So I really want like a pleated like cap sleeve. I think it'll be really cute. So I'm basically just going to do some pretty big pleats down here on either side. So now that these are all pleated, I think I want these pleats to be pretty sharp. So I'm just going to go and iron them super quickly. Alrighty, I think the time has finally come to put the bodice pieces together, which is kind of nerve wracking, so I'm not totally sure how I should do this. But what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to sew the lining pieces and the front pieces together first and then I'm going to sew around all of them. So I'm going to unpin the bodice piece from the lining, but I'm going to pin the two bodice pieces together. Okay, so now I'm going to take the back lining piece and I'm going to sew them down together on the right side so we can leave the left side open for an invisible zipper. So now that the lining pieces are sewn together, I'm going to sew the other front pieces together. And now that they are all sewn together, I'm going to put them pretty side to pretty side and I'm going to pin all of the edges together. So I made a little bit of an edit in the back just so it comes in a little bit closer. And now I think I'm going to sew around the top edge and the armholes. And I'm just going to leave this center part unsewn right now because I'm not totally sure how I want to do it yet. And I will fix that in a minute. I also think I'm going to add in the sleeves right now. So I'm going to take this edge and I think I'm just going to sew it into the back part right here. So I'm just going to be very careful when I sew around this that I don't sew into the little sleeve that's sticking out right here. Um, yeah, and while I was sewing that, like, right as I went over the boning, I remembered that I'm supposed to take out the boning before I sew this part, so I'm going to seam rip that really quickly. <laughs> Alright, now this is the tricky part because we obviously made the cross into two pieces, but I'm only sewing it onto one piece, so I have to figure out how to finish both of these seams onto the one piece. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to unpin them, and now I drew the line where I want the seam to go. I'm going to pin this one onto it, and then at the cross, right at the center, I put a mark where I want to stop sewing. So I'm just going to sew down to this point. So I'm going to sew this side first. Now that one side is sewn, I'm going to fold the pieces back, and I'm going to put the other side on top. And I'm going to sew it basically the same way that I just did the last one. Now I'm just going to cut down the center of this B so we're able to turn it right side out. And now it's time to see if that freaking worked. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, that totally works. 
So now this crisscross is sewn directly into the fabric, so that'll make it a lot easier to wear. Alrighty, the top is looking pretty good now. I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. So now I need to connect the sleeves to the front part. So I tried it on and I've decided that I want the sleeves to be 10 inches long, so I'm going to cut them at 12 to give me a little bit more extra room. And then after that, I'm going to just seam rip this side seam open here where the top connects. And I'm going to insert it and re-stitch that seam kind of like the way that we did them on the back. Yay! The bodice is finally done! The only thing I have to do is I took out the boning, like I said, so I'm just going to cut these edges and round them so that they don't poke any holes into my fabric, and then I'm just going to put them back in. And then I also need to take it to the iron and just iron down all of the seams, but the bodice is done! I'm so happy! <laughs> So it is finally time to start working on the skirt, which is always like the most exciting part for me. I'm so pumped about this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do on the skirt is I'm going to sew both of the side seams, but on the right side, I'm going to leave it open a little bit so that I can insert the invisible zipper later. And now it is finally time to unroll all of my tool. I'm so pumped. And I'm basically just going to open it up and turn my machine tension up really, really high and sew through all of this so that it gathers it all into a very big puffy skirt. So I did just ruffle all of this tool. But I tried it on with the dress and it just wasn't filling it out the way that I wanted it to and they're just it's not enough content here to like get the poof that I want. So I just bought a petticoat on Amazon right now for like $20. So that should come in tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. So I think I'm probably going to end up scrapping all the tool, but maybe I'll use it for a different project. Alrighty, so today is December 23rd, so obviously Christmas Eve is tomorrow, so I'm really hoping to finish this dress today because I don't think I have a whole lot more to do. Um, the main thing right now is just working on the skirt. So I've also been looking at the skirt and I've decided that I want to put some pleats into it, even though it is a circle skirt. I just wanted it to add a little bit more dimension to the skirt. So basically I'm just going to cut this a little deeper so that I have more room to add in the pleats. And now that I have more room around the waist of the skirt, I'm going to pin the side seam to the side seam of the bodice. And I'm going to add pleats connecting to the last pleats on the bodice and also down the back seams. But before I pin the skirt to the bodice, I'm just going to cut down all of our boning to where we want to sew it and I'm going to round all the edges so it doesn't poke through the fabric at all. And now I'm just going to go ahead and sew all around the waist. is finally attached to the skirt and it's looking like an actual dress now and the next thing I'm going to do is finally put in the invisible zipper so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it in and make sure that I come in towards the waist a little bit so that I mimic exactly the way I sewed it on the other side all right we are so so close to being done the invisible zipper looks great I'm super happy with it so the very last thing to do is to hem this gigantic bottom. So I'm going to try it on and pin it to a length that I like, and then just do the smallest hem possible that I can do on it, <laughs> which is going to take a while with all this fabric. So I actually was able to get my rolled hem foot working on my machine, and I did like the tiniest little baby hem all the way around it. And now the dress is officially done! I am so pumped to show you guys what it looks like. It looks so good. I'm so happy with it. Da da da! Here is finally the finished dress! I was honestly a little bit surprised that I finished this dress before Christmas. I wasn't totally sure if I was going to be able to. It took a lot of work, but I am so happy with the results. I think it's so pretty. And this is also like my first proper gown ever, and I'm so in love with it. I had so much fun wearing it all day. And this is also my first strapless dress, which was honestly unintentional. I didn't think about the sleeves while I was draping it. I was like, it has sleeves, it's not strapless. But then while I was trying it on, I was like, oh wait, these straps literally don't support anything. This is totally a strapless dress. But because of all the boning we did, it held up super well. I was super happy with it. And it was honestly really comfortable like wearing this dress. I didn't have any issues with it. And I had just so much fun like modeling it and prancing around in it. I, I love this dress a lot. And honestly, I felt like a little bit like a Disney princess in it, which I'm not complaining about. Also because tis the season, here's me posing with the ranger we put in our backyard because, um, because it was, because it was fun.
All right, well, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Yoshi and I and also Oreo wanted to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I know it's already past Christmas, but this rest is kind of a last minute thing. Just as a little heads up, I'm not gonna be posting on January 1st as I normally would, but I will be back on January 7th because I want a little break to play Animal Crossing. <laughs> That's the honest truth, is that bad? But thank you guys for sticking around and I hope the next year treats you guys all well. So I will see you in 2021. Bye guys!